Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Java 2D OpenGL game development tutorial series. I have a new microphone, as you've probably noticed, so the audio quality of these videos should improve. Um, today, in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to get started on our game loop. Now, game loops, there are many different ways you can do game loops. Um, for our purposes, we're going to start with a simple game loop until we get the input system uh, working the way we want it to and the game updating system working the way we want it to, and then we might take our game loop and make it a bit more sophisticated. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, is we're going to create a new package. I'm just going to call this one org.engine. And inside of it, we're going to create a class that I'm going to call main. And check this button. If you're using Eclipse, there's this button right here. Uh, what method stubs would you like to create? Public static void main. I want that one, uh, which, as you probably know, is the entry point to a Java program. Now, of course, we already have a main uh, method back in the renderer class. We started the game from from here in this main method. Um, we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and move it over uh, to the main class. All it did so far was it called renderer.init. Renderer.init, just like that. And you have to import our org.graphics.renderer. And this just initializes the renderer. So if we were to run the program right now, nothing would be different except that we'd be running from this main class um, instead. And in the org.engine package, we're going to create another class. And we're going to call this one game loop. Sounds relatively self explanatory. And so what we're going to do is inside game loop, we're going to need a Boolean, a private static boolean called running and by default it's false and this is basically going to be what the variable that we use to control a while loop um, that is our main game loop we're going to create a public static void start and now some of you might wonder why I don't make game loop into a thread and start that well it's because I love having I'm addicted to using static classes because it's so easy to keep everything organized. It's also easier than making singleton uh, classes. It's, just, it's easier to just create a static uh, method for everything. So public static void start. Inside of that, we're going to create a thread. So say th thread thread equals new thread. Like so. I'm going to need a semicolon down there. And inside of this thread, we're going to put a public void run, which, as you know, is the method that gets run when you start a thread. And we're just going to put a little slash slash right there to, as a placeholder. And then we're going to say thread dot set name uh, game loop. Uh, yeah, game loop is going to be the name of this thread. And then we're going to say thread dot start. And so what this method is going to do is it's going to start our game loop. And for now, we're going to, in the public void run, we're going to say running equals true. Uh, sorry, running equals true. Then we'll say while running. And then we've got our game loop code right here. Now, the structure of a game loop is basically like this. You pull input. And then you update the game. Then you render the game. That's the basics of a game loop. Hang on a second. Go back into your main class. We're going to go ahead and say after the renderer.init, we're going to say game loop.start. OK, so that we don't have to worry about that anymore. So the basics of a game loop, you pull input, you update the game based on the input that was received, and then you render the game. And that's, that's really the basics of it. But there's more to it than that. And that's that, for example, if we just... First off, we don't have to do anything with pull input at the moment because of the way our input's going to be handled. Uh, updating the game is basically just a matter of uh, 
moving all the objects that need to be moved, calculating physics and game logic and all that. Uh, and then rendering is basically what our FPS animator is doing right now. Huh. Sorry. Um, so, so what our renderer is doing in the FPS animator thing right here. Um, if we were to delete where we've got the animator like that, it would no longer... Uh, here, here, uh, let, let's make something to test this. We'll leave our FPS animator in for right now. Uh, and in the event listener where we draw an image, we'll create a variable real quick. Uh, pub public static float x equals, uh, let's start with negative 5 maybe. And then every time we draw the image to the screen um, in display, which is right here, uh, we'll use x for the x position, and then we'll x plus equals 0.1f, or let's say 0.01f. If we were to run this code, the image should move across the screen slowly uh, in a horizontal fashion. Uh, yeah, um, if you get this error right here, it's because we moved our main method and it was expecting to find our main method somewhere else. Just right click on the project uh, and select run as Java application and it should find the main method. Uh, here it is, main in org.engine. That's the one we want. So we run this and let's see what happens with our image. It moves across the screen at around 60 frames per second because that's what we have our FPS animator set to do. Now, if we were to turn off the FPS animator um, in, where was it? Renderer, that's it. If we were to disable the FPS animator, so I'd just get rid of it entirely, then when we run the code, as you'd expect, the display does not get called every frame and we're stuck with the image being right over here on this side of the screen. So we haven't accomplished anything. Um, except now we're going to show how we can uh, render from our game loop instead of needing to uh, use the FPS animator. The first thing we have to do is we have to uh, make it where we can get this window object here because we need to be able to access the window from well, I mean, actually, we could make it easier by just creating in our renderer class. We're going to say, going to create a public static void render. And inside of it, we just say window dot display. And we give it a little um, catch at the beginning. If window is equal to null, return. Just to make sure we're never trying to render to the window that doesn't exist in case we... You know, that should never happen, but in case something goes horribly wrong. Uh, so, window.display. Now, when we run the game, what should happen, we're going to get some movement that is, uh, that is going to be really fast, because this is going to run as fast as it possibly can. we got to replace this render right here, though, with actual render code. Um, and we're going to do that by saying renderer.render. And we run the game, we should get some very fast movement here. Oh, okay, we don't. Oh, wait, wait. I know why we don't. It's because there is an FPS cap on the graphics on the, on the GL window. There's sort of an an automatic FPS limiter going on. I think we could disable that as long as I can remember how I did it. That's part of the convenience of having some extra code that was previously written that you can look at. Um, animator base. Maybe it's in this graphics? No, no, it's not in graphics. It would have to be in a renderer. Eh. I'll come back to that. Uh, all you need to know is that there's an FPS cap on. Actually, we can probably... Um, I can probably remember which one it was. Let me see window dot it's not sync they didn't call it vsync or, or anything like that did they um 
Oh, notification. One second. Yes. There's a lot of methods as you can see in this. Uh, a lot of methods in the GL window class. Okay. Um. Hmm. Yes, I'm not exactly sure which one it is. I'm, I'll have to go back and check. Because I'm actually doing the game loop differently this time than I normally do. Because my normal game loops uh, are relatively simplistic. Uh, but I wanted to make something a bit more robust. Which requires that we take off the um, FPS cap. Think kind of like in video games when you've got V-Sync where it tries to keep you from updating any faster than your screen's refresh rate. That's kind of what we've got going on here. Uh, and that's what's causing... Uh, oh, wait a second. Go back into Event Listener. It's one, one thing I want to try here. It's probably not this, but... GL... Dot GL... You'll plan your call. It's going to be one of, the, I think this might be one of the GL functions, which I don't really want to go through right now to find the one I'm looking for. So let's go back to our game loop. Um, in our game loop, when we've got everything running properly, the problem, I mean, as in whenever we've gotten rid of the vsync type thing that's blocking our rendering code, um, the problem that we'll have is we'll pull the input, update the game, and render, and then pull the input, update the game, and render, and we'll do this as fast as possible, faster than is necessary, and this is going to max out the user's CPU. Um, so what, what we need to do is we need to have the thread sleep at some point, you know, pause a little bit. We could do that like this. At the beginning, we're going to say long uh, start time equals system dot nano time. Now, nano time gets the current time from the system clock uh, in the most precise measurement possible. It'll be measured in nanoseconds, but if you can't get nanoseconds with your system's clock, it will return nanoseconds. Um, that have been rounded off to the nearest um, type of pre precision that you can get. In other words, the last few nanosecond digits will be zero uh, because that doesn't have that much precision, but you will get a, a result that is measured in nanoseconds. So, at the end... <sighs> Sorry, I'm yawning so much. I just didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. Um, we're going to say long... Time taken equals system dot nano time minus start time. And this basically just gets how long has it taken for us to complete this loop. So from the beginning of the loop to the end of the loop. How long has it taken? Uh, and we want to sleep for the remaining amount of time that we have left. Which means that if we've got... Um, if if we're supposed to take 16 milliseconds for every uh, update and we only take 10 milliseconds to complete the loop, then we need to sleep for the remaining six. And how do we calculate how much uh, time we're supposed to sleep for? Well, there's a simple way to do that, and that's um, up here. Let's create a couple variables. Private, static, uh, FPS. No, let's say, call that target. FPS equals 60. I oh, sorry, private static int target FPS equals 60. So private static int target time is going to be equal to one 
zero 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 zero. That's milliseconds for you. Not milliseconds, nanoseconds. That's one second's worth of nanoseconds. Uh, and we're going to take that and divide it by the target FPS. So this gives us target time is the number of nanoseconds it should take to complete one cycle of the loop. So if it takes less than that, we obviously want to sleep for some of that. And the way we do that is once we've calculated time taken, if time taken is less than target time, then thread dot sleep for and we're going to put this in parentheses right here um, sleep for target time minus time taken divided by one zero 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 we have to divide it because thread dot sleep does not take nanoseconds it takes milliseconds I prefer to use, you could use system.currentTime milliseconds to get milliseconds instead of nanoseconds, but I prefer nanotime because it's more precise, and I, I appreciate the precision that we get with that. And we have to surround this with try catch, as you can see. And so now what will happen is we'll pull the input, we'll update the game, we'll render the game and then we will sleep for the remaining amount of time so that we run up approximately 60 frames per second. Now this is a very basic game loop. Uh, it can get more basic than this and those game loops are pretty bad. Uh, but like I said, we're going to make our system more robust as time goes on. Uh, as we actually in, uh, implement our input polling system and our game updating system and we limit our or remove our FPS cap then we're going to start being able to turn, turn this game loop into something a bit more robust. So we're not going to write it all at once. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching this uh, episode. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, like I said uh, yesterday, I'm going to try to keep uploading every weekday, Mondays through Fridays, uh, as long as we've got a tutorial series going. Uh, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I covered in this episode, uh, just leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, so again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.